So hey guys, welcome. In this video, we are going to be looking at some microphone preamplifiers, a variety of different ones, checking out noise levels, features, things like that, mainly with the focus of powering the Shure SM7B. This microphone is very popular. You see it used by podcasters, radio show hosts, singers, a variety of people use this microphone. And it is also perhaps my favorite microphone and a uh, channel favorite here. Now that said, it is a deceptively challenging microphone to set up. It is a dynamic microphone, so it puts out a very weak audio signal when you speak into it. And it doesn't take power, so it requires a external microphone preamplifier to amplify that signal to a level that you know your computer can use or your sound card to use or, or, or whatever. And a lot of people make the mistake of uh, purchasing a microphone preamplifier that isn't quite good enough for this microphone. And it ends up being quite noisy or very low in volume. So in this video, I wanted to just explore some different microphone preamplifiers, compare it, compare them and see kind of what you should expect for the a variety of different options I have in my home studio. Uh, it also is an opportunity for me to test and try out this new preamp. This is a brand new device I just got in the mail today. It is the Scarlett Solo 3rd Gen. So this is a very popular microphone preamplifier, the Gen 1 and Gen 2. But this is the 3rd generation. It's, it's, I, was, I just got it in. Uh, I don't know how long it's been out, but it's by Focusrite. And it is one of the more affordable preamplifiers for the home studio. So we'll also check this out. And next, I guess we're going to do an unboxing of this and we're going to do a feature review of each of the preamps. And then I'll just throw the results up and we'll talk about them after. Okay, let's get to it. Okay, so this is what comes in the box. We have the Focusrite device and we have a cable to connect it to your computer on the back. We can just plug it in. It's type C USB and it plugs into your computer with a type A 2.0 port. So some MacBook laptops might have problems, but most most computers should have no problems powering this. And then we have on the front, we have the XLR port. This is where your microphone is going to connect to. You generally want to use a, a XLR cable that is as short as you need and is well insulated, well shielded. That way you can reduce noise. It plugs in there and then you have the gain knob. And unlike previous generations of the Focusrite, one of the main changes that I like about this upgraded version is that it has a gain of 56 decibels. The older versions were like 47 and 53 or something like that. So this has a higher gain. And that's very important because the Shure SM7B, uh, they recommend you have at least 60 decibels of gain. Probably they recommend closer to 70. So this is actually not enough for the Shure SM7B on its own if we're looking at the recommended requirements. But we'll still do a test here and look at some alternatives on how to uh, still get away with this. Okay, so next up we have these devices. These are also preamplifiers for microphones. They're a little bit different than the Focusrite Scarlett and other USB preamps, however. Uh, you might notice that there's a XLR output and an XLR input, but there's really no USB or any obvious power that goes for both of them. This device here just has two channels. Now they are dependent on another device. So it's dependent typically on another preamp that can provide them power through something called phantom power. And the way it works is, well, let's say we bought the focus right here and it has 56 decibels of gain. And we have our Shure SM7B microphone here and it needs 70 decibels of gain. Well, you can pick up one of these microphone preamplifiers that are in line and you can drop it down in between. So now you can connect the XLR cable from the microphone to the XLR input of the preamplifier. And then you take the output of this and you feed it into the input of the USB preamplifier. 
Okay, and so the idea here is you are amplifying the microphone and then amplifying it again. These devices, the cloud lifter and the cathedral, are about 20 to 25 decibels of gain. There's another device by SC Electronics called the DM1 Dynamite. I think that does 28 decibels of gain. Uh, they run between $100 and $150 per channel. Uh, this cloud lifter here has two channels in it, so it'd probably be closer to $300. Bucks. Um, point being, though, this has an effective gain now of around 70 decibels, which is what the recommended gain for the Shure SM7B is. So you can buy these two relatively inexpensive items, combine them, and then you can get the performance you need for the Shure SM7B. Now to power this device, there's a little button here called the 48 volt. It's a, it's a phantom powered uh, way of powering this. So you turn this button on when you have the cables connected and you will have a kind of like an invisible power source being provided through that cable to the device. And now the device has an amplifier within it that will then amplify the microphone. So it's like a pre pre amplifier. Then we have the pre amplifier and it's sent out to your computer over USB. Very popular way of powering a SM7B these days. We'll also take a look at this and compare pricing at the end. Okay, so now we have the M Audio M Track 2. This is a fairly old USB preamp I picked up maybe a few years ago actually. It is two channels, so you have two XLR inputs, not just a guitar and a mic. You can mix it up, you can have two mics, two guitars, whatever you want in that regard. And it has 60 decibels of gain per channel, which is a little bit higher than the Scarlett third gen. And here we have the USB Pre 2 by Sound Devices. This is a device that runs around eight to nine hundred dollars US. So it's my most expensive preamplifier, but it's also very similar to the M Audio M Track 2 in terms of basic functionality. It does have things like the Mic 1, Mic 2, so two, ch two channels. It has a dedicated line and auxiliary input though, and you can toggle between that on the front here. Also, you have quite a bit of gain. So unlike the M-Audio, which only goes up to around 60, this goes up to around 70 to 80 decibels of gain. So lots and lots of headroom there. You have a very large meter in the front, LED meter, to see the gain levels. So while the M-Audio M-Track 2 might have four LEDs, this has you know, a ton. So you can clearly see what level you're setting things to. In terms of output, it has USB, 3.0 so you can record to your computer with it and it has some more traditional outputs auxiliary out line out and it has some professional outputs on the back it also has a little hidden compartment here that has some toggle switches dip switches and you can program that on the back here by looking at the menu so phantom power you can program and there's a limiter functionality you can turn on Next up, we have this device. This is the Zoom H6. It is unique in that it is considered probably a field recorder. It has four channels for XLR input, one, two, and three, four. It also has a detachable microphone, a stereo microphone. You can put different microphones on here. And I think you can also get two more XLR inputs, perhaps. So that's kind of nice. It has a screen so you can see the gain. You can also uh, do channel mixing on here, which is very unique, mixing audio on a device like that. It can save to either SD card or you can save to USB to your computer. So it acts as a mobile recording studio with batteries on the back to power it all. Uh, it does go through batteries pretty quick, but well worth it. And in terms of gain, we'll check that out. The gain on this is not super great for the SM7B, but we'll take a closer look in a second. So just having a little bit of fun, we're also gonna take a look at the Ceremonic Smart Rig. And so this is a battery powered nine volt XLR preamp, and you can change the gain with this knob here. Microphone goes in here, and this connects uh, probably to your smartphone let's say it can connect to quite a few things um, computer even and one inexpensive way of powering an XLR microphone 
but will it power a SM7B? We'll check that out in the review. So next step, we're gonna take a look at this device. I'm using it to record my voice right now with a lavalier microphone, not the built-in microphone that's included, but you can plug in microphones to the side here. Now it's not XLR based, um, so you need an adapter. So 3.5 goes in, and then we can connect the Shure SM7B to the XLR adapter. And that will allow us to record either directly to a micro SD card on the device, or we can use USB and record to our computer that way with the device. So it's quite versatile and it will work with the Shure SM7B, but how well, which we'll, we'll have to just check out in a moment. So as you can tell, there's quite a few different ways to power a Shure SM7 microphone. There's hundreds of different preamps out there, so I can't cover them all. But I did want to just touch on these two quickly. This is a Mackie mixer. It lets you plug in lots of different microphones, uh, mixers in general allow you to do that. You also have kind of like tonation control. You can change the EQ and you can also mix all the audio channels as needed. This particular one by Mackie does have a Firewire output so you can connect it to your computer. But many mixers don't have a digital output. And for that reason, I'm just going to avoid mixers in this review. And I'm going to say, unless you know what you're doing, I would recommend you avoid buying a mixer for the SM7B, although it would work. I also want to touch on this device. This is the DBX286S. There's also a 286A. Sorry, this is the A. There's a 286S out now that you can buy. So this is a, an older version. This is a single channel microphone preamplifier as well. You can put a microphone in the XR input here and you get analog output on the back. There is no digital output on this though. So you need some type of digital audio interface to connect this to your computer. And for that reason, I'm not going to include it any further in this video as well. I did just want to mention that the gain on this is around 60 decibels or so. So it is enough to power a Shure SM7B. It also has a gating function, so you can reduce the background noise with this device, which is kind of nice. I'm not a big fan of gating functions. I prefer to use software noise filters. But if you have a live audio application, this is still quite useful. And it's rack mounted, so it's targeted more for professionals. And so, again, I would probably recommend you, you avoid buying this unless you know what you're doing. So to start off the testing, since we are looking at the quality of the preamps for the purpose of powering a Shure SM7B, I'm going to be mainly trying to test how much gain each preamplifier offers and what the noise floor is for each preamplifier. So in this first test, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this microphone into a soundproof enclosure, and I'm going to then generate a audible tone with a speaker. That tone is roughly the same volume as the human voice. And so that's going to give us a control range for all the preamps in terms of max gain. And then I'm going to replace the microphone with a 150 ohm kind of a dumb load, and that's going to act as a zero signal source for the preamplifier. And that will allow us to get a good idea of what noise the preamplifier is generating without a microphone attached at that gain level. So here are the results from that first test. On the left, we have the Scarlett Solo 3rd Gen. We can see that it reaches a peak signal gain of around negative 15 decibels. And it has a noise floor of, of around 70, which is overall pretty good. I would point out that you generally want to record with a peak signal of around negative 12 to negative 6, depending on what you're trying to do. But very unique to the Scarlett Solo 3rd Gen, it has a software gain functionality built into it. So I didn't include that in this result. But if you go past 50% record volume, it will actually kick into the software mode and it will let you increase that gain to whatever you want it to be. It doesn't reduce the noise, but it will let you make the signal as loud as you need it. And that makes the Scarlett Solo 3rd Gen very, um, very helpful if you are doing things like a Twitch live stream where you don't have the option of doing post-production to increase the volume. It's built into the driver. You can easily adjust it to whatever volume level you want. Next up, we have the USB Pre-2. At max gain, it nearly clips the signal. It's very high. And 
In terms of the noise floor, it gets negative 56 decibels as a noise floor. I've heard in the past that negative 60 is where you want a noise floor to be. That's when it starts becoming inaudible. Uh, so it's pretty close to being perfect on that front um, for the Shure SM7B, but it still has a little bit of a margin of improvement, let's call it. Then we have the M-Track 2. It gets very similar results to the USB Pre 2, actually. The only difference is it has a little bit less gain, negative six peak on the gain, but that is a sweet spot for my applications generally. So the M Track 2 is pretty great on that front, but if you want to increase the volume anymore, you're going to have to use post processing or some type of audio plugin to get it all the way up to zero decibels. In contrast to the M-Track 2, we have the Zoom H6. It also achieves about the 60 decibels of gain, reaching around negative five, negative six decibels of peak signal. But as you can look at the noise floor on this guy, it gets a noise floor that is close to what? Negative 50 dB. So it's quite audible in terms of its noise floor. It has less dynamic range between signal and noise. The Solo with the Cloud Lifter. Generally, people in the, in the past when they bought these USB-based preamplifiers, they did not have a way to increase the volume past, let's say, negative 15, negative 20 decibels even. And that made the device very quiet. So people would go out and buy a cloud lifter, which would increase the gain 20 decibels, and they would attach it to your Scarlet Solo first gen, let's call it, and it would get the gain up to that negative 10 decibels, negative five decibels, negative two decibels peak. And that's where people wanted it. And so it was able to kind of help those early, early devices uh, output a loud enough signal now, the problem that I have with these cloud lifters is if you increase the volume in software, you may not need it. And in this particular case, we see that other devices perform as well or better in terms of a noise floor. Uh, so the cloud lifter in this case is not really helping a device like the Scarlet Solo third gen reduce the noise and if you're using the software gain built into the third gen, you don't need the cloud lifter to add any additional gain. You can do it through software. You don't need a hardware device to do it. Any, anyways, it does work. I had to turn down the gain six decibels on the solo because if I didn't, it would be clipping. So it's actually too loud when you combine them and have them set to full gain. Next, we use the, the cloud lifter with the Zoom H6. The point here was not to increase the gain, but to try to reduce the noise floor. The cloud lifter being a kind of like a pre preamplifier amplifies that signal. So the H6 does not need to do as much work. And by reducing the gain on the H6, we also reduce the noise that it introduces. And as a result, when we compare the Zoom H6 at full gain without the cloud lifter to the Zoom H6 with the cloud lifter at reduced gain, we see that the noise floor actually dropped and we were actually able to increase the gain. So we got a stronger, better signal. So in this particular case, the cloud lifter was very helpful. So in this next chart, we're looking at the signal to noise ratio of the preamplifiers. This is not looking at how much gain the, the preamplifiers offer. As we saw with the Scarlet, the gain doesn't really matter as much because you can change that in software. But the signal to noise ratio is probably more important. The USB Pre 2 gets around 57 decibels of signal to noise ratio, which is pretty good. Around 60 decibels of signal to noise ratio, you no longer hear the noise. The Scarlet Solo at full volume, full gain, gets around 55 decibels of signal to noise ratio, which is also very good. How much of a difference that is, 
is not going to be significant. It might be audible, but not, it's not significant. When we add the cloud lifter into the solo uh, single chain, so the Scarlet solo with the cloud lifter, we see that we actually increase the amount of noise by about one decibel. So you might not want to put one of these inline preamplifiers in with the Scarlet solo third gen. It might actually just hurt things and increase the cost. With the Amtrak 2, it's a discontinued device, but it has some of the best signal to noise ratio out there. It also gets 57 decibels of signal to noise ratio, but for a device that cost me $150 when I purchased it, I think that is a great result. The Zoom H6, on the other hand, gets abysmal results. I would strongly recommend you not use it with the Shure SM7B because the noise will be, will be noticeable. You can fix the noise using software and post-processing, but generally it's not a good choice for the Shure SM7B. Now we're going to try to fix that problem by adding a cloud lifter to the Zoom H6. And when we do that, we actually do increase the signal to noise ratio substantially. That is largely because the cloud lifter is doing all the upfront work by amplifying that very weak signal into something that the Zoom H6 doesn't have to work very hard on. It. And so we can turn down the gain on the Zoom H6 by 16 decibels and that also reduces the noise substantially. So the cloud lifter with the Zoom H6 makes the Zoom H6 a usable device for the Shure SM7B. It still has higher noise than the Scarlet Solo. So it's not a very cost effective solution, but there you go. As mentioned, we are also looking at the Zoom H1N. It is really bad results here. You cannot put a cloud lifter in series with the Zoom H1N because there is no phantom powered power available. There's no 48 volts to turn on with the Zoom H1N. So it is just a bad result, lots of noise. The Ceramonic Smart Rig, which is a very portable device that you can use with your smartphone, that gets a equally bad signal to noise ratio. And so neither of those devices will let you get a clean, a clean recording with your Shure SM7B. That's why you don't want to spend $50 on a preamp. You want to generally spend uh, maybe $150 or more for a good preamplifier for the Shure SM7B if you want to have a nice clean source. So in this next test, what we're doing is I've recorded my voice into the Shure SM7B. I removed all the noise from my recording with software, and then I played my voice back into the Shure SM7B with three different preamplifiers to give you an idea of what type of noise it introduces into a recording. I have all the recordings normalized to the same peak level of volume. And so you, if you listen carefully, you can kind of hear the background noise in the recording. That's largely introduced from the room, from the cable, from the microphone, from wherever. But you can still hear the noise introduced from the preamplifier. And that is something that you'll hear in particular in the third recording. So let's get into it. So this is a test of the Shure SM7B. I'm speaking from about four or five inches away from the front of the microphone at normal speaking volume. I am in a quiet room in my home. So this is a test of the Shure SM7B. I am speaking from about four or five inches away from the front of the microphone at normal speaking volume. So this is a test of the Shure SM7B. I am speaking from about four or five inches away from the front of the microphone. 
When we compare the Scarlett Solo and the M Audio M Track 2, the noise floors between these two devices when we listen to them didn't seem that different. And that was largely because the noise being introduced isn't from the preamplifier in this case. It's mostly from the room or from the cabling or from the microphone even. It's getting in other places and it is more significant than the preamplifier's noise. What this tells us is we don't really need to worry about having the very best preamplifier in the home studio environment. If you had a professional studio that had isolated sound environments, things like that, you might be able to get away with justifying a very expensive preamplifier. But in, in your home, when you have a laptop or a, or a computer nearby, the noise being introduced is going to be more than the preamplifier. In the case of the Zoom H6 though, the preamplifiers are so poor in comparison that we actually can hear the noise being introduced from those preamplifiers. When you're purchasing a preamplifier though, you will also need to look at features. And each of these preamplifiers we looked at today have a different function, a different feature, and a different price range to reflect that. The M Audio M Track 2 has two channels, while the Scarlett Solo only has one microphone channel. The Zoom H6, though, has four to six channels. Other things you need to look at when you're buying a preamplifier are does it have a limiter? Does it have battery power? Does it have USB output? Does it have a direct monitor? Can you listen to yourself in real time without any latency? Does it come with free software or not? What are the user reviews like online? The M Audio M Track 2 has some of the lowest noise floors that we looked at today. However, it has a relatively low user review score online. When you, when you turn it on, it often doesn't like to wake up. So you might need to unplug it, replug it in. It has all these little finicky issues with it and that drags down the score. So you can't look at buying a preamplifier just on the quality of the preamps themselves, but it is something to keep in mind. In terms of the cloud lifters, there is this, I didn't look at the cathedral, but we looked at the cloud lifter, which is very similar. There's also a dynamite uh, DM1 preamp you can buy that's very similar to the cloud lifter for a little less money. Do you need to buy a cloud lifter? Well, that's up to you. We saw that with the Zoom H6, it made quite an improvement, it reduced the noise floor quite a bit. With the Focusrite Scarlett Solo 3rd Gen, didn't make as much sense to buy a cloud lifter for this thing. We saw that it actually increased noise by about one decibel when we connected it. And with the software driver gain functionality that allows you to increase the gain past the 56 decibels that it does at the hardware level to whatever you want, you don't need a cloud lifter to add that extra recording gain. It does it through software. And at the price point of anywhere between $100 and $150 US, um, the Focusrite Scarlett Solo 3rd Gen seems to be a great entry-level preamp for those buying a Shure SM7B. It's not perfect. It still comes up short, uh, in my opinion, for professional applications. But for the average at-home recording artist, it will be more than adequate. I would say you probably do not need to buy a cloud lifter for that device, and it's definitely worthy of consideration. There are other devices out there that offer cleaner preamps, but unless you're in a studio, you probably will not be able to appreciate that functionality. Anyways, guys, that's the end of the video, end of the review at least. Um, I just wanted to shout out to a side project I'm working on called SkinDeep.ai. You can check it out in the App Store, Google Play, or wherever. It's SkinDeep.ai. It's a mobile app I'm working on right now. I just pushed out a beta version, the very first version. It allows you to use AI to create faces, essentially. Um, yeah, check it out if you want to support me on that front. Give me a five-star rating in the App Store or just like this video, whatever. I appreciate it. just encourages me to work more. Thanks, guys. Take care.